everybody you are tuned to computers 2k now on the nissan communications network i'm i your host for the next few hours along with spence good morning good morning good morning from the uh, arctic ice shelf okay it's all melted behind you but it's fine well, no, the, the, and the ice shelf is still there and gal is here good morning good morning and nick is here what, did I not do a good enough intro last week that I'm, I got canceled? No, you got okay. They found something oh, got, in your social, in your social uh, networking past. Sorry. Oh, you're, you're gone. If no, you follow I, my Twitter, I'd be, I could never run for political It office. just wasn't musical enough, that's all. <laughs> Our I number. Mean, I got, go ahead. No, sorry, go ahead. Our be number is 919-518-9773, Computers 2K Voice on Skype. And today's show is made possible by vMix Software, Telestream's Wirecast Software, and is sponsored by Tom Sinclair of Live Streaming Gear. So, kind of a slow week again, computer-wise. But, uh, hey. I did do the uh, 2004 update on one machine. Let's hear it. Yeah. No problems. It was it yeah. was an old older machine. Haven't had it on much. I think I did the nineteen nineteen oh what was the last one? Nineteen oh nine. Nineteen oh nine. Nineteen oh nine. Yeah, I think I did that back in March or earlier than that, and just hadn't turned the machine on since then. Uh, ran some ran the updates first, then I put it on the thumb drive. Ran it that way. It took about two and a half hours. Came right up. No problem. Yeah, I did we've. It um, and I'm suffering. Are you? Yep. Why? What's your problem? Uh, some of Shy's games just stopped working. Really? Uh -oh. Yep. Now, uh, did the did you do the most? Re are you on the nightly build? Do you have an Nvidia card? I have an Nvidia card. Yes. Ch check the nightly drivers for the Nvidia card. That's not the issue. Interesting, because a friend of mine had some similar issues, and the nightly drivers fixed his uh, fixed his. Uh, yeah, so it's not a drivers issue. It's like some components are completely missing. Some like what game? Media component. Um, Monopoly. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> just that one. Just the one game. Um, I think that's the only one we couldn't we <clears> couldn't <throat> find a solution for it at this. Interesting. Point. Yeah. Hmm. I played a couple games since I updated last week. Um. I've played a couple games. I haven't had any. That, that's interesting. I have not heard in my circle of, uh, my small circle of video game people, I've not heard that. That's interesting, though. Yeah. We've done about 500 computers now at work that we've got to 2004, and our issues have been pretty minimal. Um, we had one set of computers, uh, HP laptops, in which the Wi-Fi NIC was disabled upon the update. Oh, so, other HP laptops. Yeah. So we had to call. So, you know, we had to call. So all the users called and we had to control mean, panel, networking, disabled, right click. Disabled in the OS, control so panel. Disabled, disabled in the actual, in the, in the uh, device manager. Disa uh, disabled in the, like not turned off. Like you had to go into control panel, network and sharing center adapters, and then right click on it and click enable. Like, but you had no, no problem enabling it. No, no problem enabling, but it became disabled. And unfortunately, if your Wi-Fi becomes disabled, I can't remote into your computer to yeah, fix it for you. So the, the guy who worked on that driver, he was doing his work, and a guy said, hey, look, look out the window. There's a blimp. And so Hey, look, there's a bunch of it. protesters. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So but I, I heard that there was there was some I, I read there was problems with print printers with two thousand four. I have I can cross my fingers and say that I have dealt with none as of right now. That's which is very great. nice. That, that's no, what I, I was not, say. I did not check printers on this machine. Nineteen oh four was a an abomination when it came to printers. It broke. We must have spent probably a hundred hours over a couple of weeks with all the different techs going in and just resetting printers. But what a pain in the ass. They, they, they botched that update big time. Now here is an interesting situation. After it did the 2004 on the computer in the office, mm -hmm. I said, well, I need to go and check to see if it also did it on the machine over here. Cause let's make sure everything is okay. So I came and look and went to the updates and it says you're up to date. 1903. Huh? It's 1903. But it says your computer is up to date. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. It's, just, it's a perspective thing. It's up to date no. from that perspective. <laughs> <laughs> First of yeah. all, they do not offer the upgrade to computers that the uh, scanning will see as um, uh, incompatible. What do you mean? Hardware so wise? If they think, yeah, if their scan shows that uh, your hardware can't deal with the new version or whatever, then yeah, there's, you're, you're, you're there's on There's no the way that's one. the case. So this cannot, this, this did not do the last two updates? Well, I, okay, where did a, you see that? It, we, it, if you go to, if you if type, I, if it, you click no, on no. the start button, oh, right, and and type this, what it was say? Yeah, you told me about or something like that. It's going to say this PC Winver. I think you need to run. Yeah, but you can do it. Um, let's see. Oh no, I'm sorry. Type. Yeah, you're right. Type about, and it says about your PC. And if you scroll down to the bottom, it'll say what version of Windows. Yours says 1903. I'm on about. And I'll say Windows specifications Absolutely. at the bottom. It says Windows 10 Pro 1903. Installed That's insane. On 6 5 2020. Okay, then it's just wrong because mine says the same thing. What's the okay. OS build number? OS build 18362836. Oh. Yeah, you're on an old build. You better run that update assistant from Microsoft's website and get that squared away. It's It'll install all the prerequisites for you. And when you go to Windows Update, it says everything is updated. Yeah. That's Those, good. the, uh, that is one thing that's been kind of, well, not kind of, that's one thing that's been very frustrating on Windows 10 is the Windows 10 updater has been very inconsistent because what Amnon's describing is not an uncommon issue. I mean, I'll go log into a computer, it'll have 17 something on it, and it'll say up to date. And I'm like, how? What are you checking? Right. Like, what are you, are you not, if you're on the internet, so how, how can you not find that you're on a three-year-old version of the OS? See, it says Windows Update. You're up to date. Last check. Last check, 6-11-2020. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it does make sense. The update Do you the have a filter set that you're no. telling it it has to delay a some, certain no. number of days? No. Yeah, but you can only delay a week or a month or something. Oh, like you that. can delay. It says you can delay. You can it says delay, delay, delay for seven to, days. But I don't know. I don't know that it's enabled, but it was, it was just weird because just the other day we were, we were talking about 2004 and Nick was saying, do this and see if it already did it. And I saw that it didn't do it on the machine in the office. So that's when I came here to see if it did it. And I said, 1903? Huh? That's Windows Update. Well, the good news is um, I found out this past week you can still run the Windows 7 to Windows 10 um, upgrade uh, upgrade tool. Yeah. So uh, if you are not running Windows 10 yet and you've got a computer that's Windows 7 that maybe you don't have hooked up, might now might be a good time to go ahead and plug that thing in, get it up to Windows 10 and install the, the newest feature update. Um, it's, it's, it is still available. It's always available, but it's available well, free now. 
I mean, you can still do well, it. Well, yeah, free. that's my point. Is it's yeah. still free, yeah. and I don't know how. I would assume it's going to be free forever, but I, you know, who knows? It's just undocumented, unpublished. <laughs> yes. So I mean, it's it's totally legal. It's not anything shady. It's directly from Microsoft's right. website, but. Yeah eventually that's going to go away and then you're going to have to shell out a hundred dollars plus for a copy of windows. And that's just stupid. So. Absolutely. But I still have to go back that machine I was working on for a customer that had the print spooler just disappeared when mm -hmm. I went from seven to 10, I would like to go back now and do an in place upgrade again to the newer version to 2004 and see if what happens there, if it fixes this. I still, I want to still eventually do a clean install. That's, I, I convinced them that's the right thing to do because of, it was a, a software issue they had, like six or eight versions of Quicken on there, different years and tax software and all that. It just wasn't gonna happen while tax season was still in place. But I'd like to try first, I'll back everything up, then I'll try the in place upgrade and see what happens and then I'll do the clean install. Isn't it still considered tax season? Uh, aren't taxes well, until it's, like it's July still, everything, something now? Everything got extended out. Yeah, so you, yeah. There's a lot of people that haven't filed yet or just filed uh, interest-free extensions. I don't, I don't know. I think the first, the first extension when the, when the pandemic started, I think you were forgiven. You didn't have to make an estimated payment. I think yeah. some, something catches up with you eventually. Oh yeah. Oh, there's no free yeah. launch. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, it was, it was a, a surprise. To, uh, my, my accountant said, and I, I, don't, I didn't have anything to worry about, but my accountant said that you have to realize that if you don't, you still can't miss your estimated tax payments. So. Right. Oh, so, well. so to go back to the updates, to the Windows updates, so it says that Windows 10 received its monthly host of security patches earlier this week and the latest cumulative updates are causing serious problems with printers, particularly, particularly Ricoh devices, but also other mo models. The so-called Patch Tuesday fixes released earlier the week, which causing the chaos are the KB4557957 and 4560960 which are for the May 2020 updates and the November 2019 update. Uh, does note that in one case, KB4561608 for the October 2018 is also mentioned. And the guy goes, has anyone had issues today with printing and the latest Windows update? We're seeing problems with Rico printers that were previously stable. Changing the print driver seems to help but that's going to be a pain if i have to roll out too many clients other folks with rico printers have chimed in on that thread with similar issues in terms of breaking printer functionality completely or elements of it such as causing wireless printer to fail further reports of printer failures include brother and canon devices as well as some Kyocera, HP, Toshiba, and Panasonic. After an abundance of service calls these last two days, we can confidently, confidentially, confidently say PCL5 driver does not work at all, regardless of driver age. Installing the newest version of PCL6 universal driver does seem to work. Not a realistic approach to servicing hundreds of clients, but at least new clients set up before the new patch should be okay. Another solution is to simply uninstall the cumulative update, but thankfully they said that Microsoft is already working on a fix. So, so if you were, limp you were limping along with an old driver that just happened to work with a newer OS, Right. Boom. Yeah. So if, yeah. if the, the first thing that you need to try is uninstall PCL5 and install PCL6. Now, hopefully PCL6 works with older printers. If you have an older printer. 
but uh, oh, I can just see this happening where this one one company that I support because they have a bunch of old Canon, old yeah. Canon printers. Yeah. So just oh boy. Just, uh, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I, I'm just waiting for the call. <sighs> well, you see, that's that's the thing, Nick. You you guys working with companies that are pretty pretty much have newer hardware, right? No, 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 no. no. That's wow. the problem when you get a good printer. It runs forever. No. And just because, no, oh, we have this new shiny model. You want to spend $5,000 on it? And no. It literally has to break. The, 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 that, 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 that can be a really... A real, real problem. Think about it, printer. I mean, that's that's a basic thing that you have at at a job, especially like in banks. So, anybody, paperless, you know. paperless baby, paperless. Yeah, paperless. My yeah. Remember how that made such a big deal with that, out of that? And it's like yeah. paperless means nothing. Yeah, paperless means nothing until you can go to the bathroom and there's no paper yeah, there. Yeah, and that is a problem. And you can no, yeah. and you can no. That the 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 time where you can have paperless world is when you can go to the bathroom and you don't need paper anymore. You just That's throw the what, you just take your garden hose, you, th you yeah. open the window and you throw it in, <laughs> and just leave it there. So you know you're always you're always covered then. Right. Oh, well. So, yeah. I mean, it took forever. How long did it take you, Spence? Two th 2004. Were you there when he did it? What do you mean, the update? Yeah. Yeah, I ran it. I was doing all this stuff in my office. It was over I'll, two and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah. See, John is saying the same thing, but his machine is a very, very basic unit. Well, my, this that was running it on a quad core. It's an older quad core, but a quad core. What year uh, though? Mm, gosh, it's so it's an AMD. Is it, this uh, is, is it ten years old? No, not ten years no. old. Eight, okay. seven, eight years old. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Yeah. On newer machines, mine ran on my desktop in about less than thirty minutes. Really? Yeah. Well, this machine yeah. I'm on now, my my eight eight core with the solid state drive, I bet it would go pretty fast. So, yeah, this yeah, was no no SSD, no, and it's an yeah. I, I mean, I it, it, it will be. It will take oh. two hours on a computer that okay. is older. Good you know, point. in the case of John's, it's got an older AMD with only four gigs of RAM. It will, yeah, I mean, two hours sounds about right for an update. Well, it's it's not an SMR drive, right? <laughs> now, keep in mind, you can delay if you go into the advanced options and updates. You can delay a feature update up to three hundred. Let's see here. I'm looking at mine was still, I had mine set for 200 days. <laughs> Up to oh, man, 365 Spence. days. You can delay it a whole year if you want to. Yeah, but like Nick said once, uh, if you are delaying it that long, that's bad because you're not going to have the current. No, those are feature updates. Feature you're updates. still getting all the security updates every yeah, you're still week. Still getting every it. just the month. feature. It's the it's the major releases with new, you know. Yeah, but look my what point, we've done to make it better. My point was that if you run an old, fee, if you don't do a feature update and a piece of your equipment is broken, they will never know and they will never fix it. And then by the time you finally get the update, they don't they won't care. That and there may be uh, some security updates that only work yeah. with newer versions. So. Yeah. You, you're putting yourself at risk. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that was, I don't have that activated. That's turned off, but I do yeah. have the, I do have the, um, I the think option on, is still there. On, on my machine that I work on at the office, I think I have it delay for 14 days, just in case something comes on and it, it's, you read that, oh yeah, it's completely messes up. Make sure you don't do it, then you can stop it. I, I had another situation where that update on my machine that 
uh, caused it to get blue screen. Uh, KB something 9951 or something like that. I uninstalled, I removed it, uninstalled it, and everything was fine. Well, it came back. And in Windows 10, there is no, no ability to say, do not install this one again. Because what happens is, what I had to do is, Restart the, the computer after in, uninstalling it. When I, un, when I restart the computer, it started installing it. So I went to the control panel and updates and say pause. So it was kind of half-assed installed and I delayed it. But it came back the other day. I got two days in a row. I get blue screen out of nowhere and you know so did you did you find out what it is that's oh they i mean they were saying that that update is causing blue screens no but what does the update do oh i don't know well what's the difference i i don't want any blue screens i had a a customer that had that problem happen because he had to use an older version of internet explorer oh that could you had to block you had to keep taking off it just broke his his second he had a laptop with a second monitor yeah. external monitor and every time it would update it would break that monitor and it was nothing he could do about it because his company required that he use a certain version of internet explorer that was downloadable because they hadn't updated their back end yet so it was a real problem he, he, this went on so, for months until finally this company said no they opened it up so they could use uh, a different browser i i it was a security patch for internet I went and I searched and searched and searched about uh, ignoring a certain update. And finally, and it was on Microsoft's uh, forum. I can't remember the name of the program. I have it on the other computer. You, you, they say, go download this file, run it. It's a cab. Run it. And sure enough, when it came up, it looked just like Windows 7 when you could just click uh, don't remind me again about this or whatever, and you click it. And hopefully, I mean, I don't know. We'll see if it comes back or not. But uh, I took the, the delay out. I mean, I, yeah, the delay out to see what would happen. It'd be interesting to know if you, if you can, did you write the code down? Which code? The, the, the code that it's stopping on. You said it's blue screen. It's going to give you a code. Um, yeah, it's, it, no, I did not. Because it'd just be interesting to research it and see what uh, it was. Uh, yeah, Windows 10 doesn't let you do anything. I mean, I mean, did, it's sa- it's saving you. Whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! What do you mean it doesn't let you do anything? <laughs> yeah. what, what, what are you talking about? It doesn't let about? you do anything. But that's a, that's a, that doesn't make any sense. It still shows you the uh, the error code on the right. blue screen. Right, big deal. But then what are you going to do? Well, the same thing you do with Windows 7. You put it into Google and see what it means. And, and not only that, but you know how, what happens with... Uh, you know what? Hold on a second here. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of your, your hatred of Windows 10. Oh, I hate Windows I, 10. It, you know what? I, I've, been, I've been biting my tongue on this for three and a half years. You should not. I, you should be ashamed of yourself. I am ashamed the way of myself. you talk about Windows 10. I am ashamed of myself. How, you should But be. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> hate it so much you're running it on every computer. <laughs> no, but but the thing is, when when you get blue screen, it's 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 saving, and it goes. Well, it, still does, it still does a dump file. Yeah, it you d- can well, open it later. Okay, but I got up in the morning and here is it is a blue screen and it's sitting on zero. I said, okay, oh, let it finish. It yeah. must have just happened. No, oh, an so hour later, it's still on zero. Don't have any display. <laughs> <laughs> and no place to dump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no place to dump. <laughs> um, Amnon, yes. you, uh, you've taken another computer out of your setup. I took another computer out of my setup. And what was the computer running? XP. <laughs> Finally corrupt the hell out of it. This was my security system. 
Pour one out, ladies and gentlemen, for Amnon's Windows XP security yep. system. Um, <laughs> I what work specs that's that much of have? a security system, man, if you're running it on XP. That's the most vulnerable uh, Steve OS Gibson, out there. This, Steve Gibson this, would say it's the most secure operating system ever made. But <laughs> This software was made for XP. You could, yeah. not, you could not install it anymore on any newer any other computer, even if I had another XP computer, I could not install it there because when you install it, it calls home to make sure that you have the license for so many. Mm -hmm. And it's so old, they took the server that did that offline and nobody's answering. So I, I had to stay with this one. And it worked, and it worked, and it worked. Yeah, but you also had to clone that into a VM. Um, yeah, right. You could, I tried to clone the drive. I mean, that drive is about 13, 14 years old. And finally, yeah. I guess it gave up. You could not clone it. The minute you clone it, it sees that it's a different hardware. It's trying to call home. So it's, it's, a. Uh, I mean, I could never make backups because it would be worthless. I mean, I have a few hard drives that still have that software with XP and everything on it, but it won't run. It's trying to call home. So I don't know about how the system uh, tries to identify, but one of the things older system did were make sure uh, they were registered by the MAC address. When you created a VM and tried to run it inside, did you set the address of the MAC I address? I did not. What VM? System? I did not do any VM. Come on. Then just, then just hook up a, a, a backup copy of that drive if you still have it, right? Yeah. And try to, try to launch it in a VM where a the VM MAC under address is in, in a VM under XP. Well, the, the drive doesn't contain the OS? It contains XP. So boot from that drive in a VM. Just make sure that the VM, uh, the VM right, I'll tell you Mac guys, address. Next time, next time you're here, we'll try. Okay, okay. Yeah, but hold on. So here's the thing. So fortunately, though, since it's not 2004 anymore, right. there's other there's other solutions available. So what did you get? So I I actually I ordered the new system that I found on uh, Amazon finally. It's called Tiger Secure, Secure. Tiger S E C U, I think. It's a 16 channel, and it will do HD or analog. All my cameras, obviously, are analog, and it was only 200 bucks. So I get it today, and I put it in. Nice. I will let you know, and uh, I'm 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 sort of like glad to move. To, to get that computer out because like you know like Nick said it's uh, you know it's XP it, yes it's on the network but it's not really uh, it is anyway it's it's well, gone and the other thing too is and this is what I deal with a lot in um and I'm sure God deals with this a lot too and then Spence I, we all like to tinker right we're all nerds and yeah. we all we all like to tinker with things it's therapy. But, it is, but sometimes, and in the case of environment, in case of um, uh, office and business environments, you'll spend five or six or seven, maybe even ten times the price on something just to get a solution that just freaking works. That you just don't have to dick around with. It just is going to sure. work, and it's not. And, and I'm sure there's going to be some relief in this that you don't have to worry about an OS. You don't have to worry about it. You're just going to plug right. the damn thing in, and it's just going to work. Yep. And boy, let me tell you, I spent almost all Friday trying to bring that drive back to life <laughs> with all kind of different utilities and nothing, nothing. So what happened? How did you know? What, like, what, did it just, were you just sitting in front of the computer and it just shut off or what yeah. happened? Yeah. It's a, hey, it's, a, there's no, no connection and I'm looking yeah. at the computer. And That's what you get when you try to update to Windows 10 latest from XP. Come on. <laughs>
I'm going to try running the uh, feature update <laughs> on a 17-year-old operating system. No, I mean, and, and I put, I put the first thing I put was the Hiron. Hiron's boot CD. Yeah. 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 And it said that it did not recognize the partition on the drive. I mean, for all I know, the drive could have crashed. Maybe a head broke off, you know. But I, I, didn't, I didn't even take it out. I mean, I was trying this and trying that. And I ran spin right on head. it. Come on. What? Just replace the head. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Just Go on eBay, glue. find a drive that no, was just, made around the same time. It, put, so you can do a put head, a drop head of crazy there. glue yeah. and put it back. Re replace okay. the discs from the uh, old yeah. one to the new one, yeah. and voila. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I, don't laugh. I did that a few times back in the early days of five and a quarter RLL drive. And what did you worked. do? You open the drive, you take the whole mechanism out, you take out the platters, you put it in another drive, and it worked. Today you couldn't do it. Hmm. There's too many things that it looks. Yeah, the there's like the platters are like double-sided and on top of each other. Way yeah, too, which is fine. But once size. you take the whole mechanism of the heads out of the way, then you can take the, the platters out. I, I did it a few times. That It worked. But we're talking back in 80s. Mm, before my time. Yeah, that's why. I, I mean, I really, I, I was never afraid to open a drive Without being in a clean room, because it always worked. I mean, there used to be those drives. Do you? Did any of you remember the word stiction? The the older five and a quarter inch drive. They they there was oil in the bearing. And some of them, the seal busted and you would have like a uh like a sun of oil on the platter it will be in the middle and then it will shoot because it spins stiction stiction and what would happen is if the drive stopped when when the drive when hard drives spin the head floats on the drive on the platter it doesn't touch it but when the drive stops, the head touches the platter. And if it happened to stop in a place where there was oil, that drive will never start. Well, we found out if you take the drive and you just bang it on the disc and then plug it in, it will start. <laughs> and you could go and back it up and oh everything, <laughs> which is fine. But You call uh, yourself a computer expert? <laughs> <laughs> Your solution is to bang a drive on. I would love oh. to. I would have. I'd love to go back in time and listen to Amnon's radio show from the nineties. Oh, you know, like, do you know oh, how many times I can't get on my computer? You, Take the drive out, hit it on the table, and plug it back. No, 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 don't. I, you see again? You're laughing, but in yes, many, 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 many cases, people were saying the hard drive will not come on, and people then knew a little bit more. They would know that if the light is on. And they mm -hmm. could put their ear to it, and you could hear it go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's not spinning. It's trying to. Yeah. I would say, pick up. This, these were either desktop or towers. I said, pick up the front of the case about three inches and let go. And now start it. Oh, yeah, it came on. And... Huh. I said, okay, now we need to back it up, clone it. And get a new drive. remember what we used to use for clone back then. It would would you, what, Norton's Ghost or something? Maybe it was oh, Ghost. Everybody, yeah, everybody Ghost, used? Ghost was the, one of the first. Yeah, yeah, everybody and, used. And, well, and, it wasn't even it was Norton. Done. Wasn't it just Ghost? And we were doing it on, on floppies. Because oh, that's Jesus what, Christ. So <laughs> I said, we, we need to, we need to uh, back it up before because sooner or later it will not work but yes there there are there are ways to start yeah. the hard drive well i mean you look at older electro any any tube based technology i mean the whole idea of ba t banging on a tv actually mm -hmm. worked i mean that's it's in the manual 
<laughs> it tells you whatever the where to bang for that particular problem. And how I tried to do that on my solid state equipment. It doesn't work for some reason. I grew up in a house where we had a TV like that. You would it, it would the picture would go away. So it was a certain spot. My father, would, <laughs> my father, father would hit it. Yeah, or like Fonzie used to play the jukebox. Remember, <laughs> bang the side of it. <laughs> But it, it, it works, and, and it's by opening it and seeing what's going on, you learn about these things. Yeah. Very interesting. Oh. Anyway. See, um, I tried to do that, and I cracked my iPhone screen. Pretty unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. No, an iPhone uh, is supposed to You just did it at the wrong spot. That's you dip fine. it. You dip it in a glass of water <laughs> just, just to fix the iPhone. So, uh, reports on the Verge saying that Warner Media is getting rid of the HBO Go app. I mean, you you saw it advertised again and again. They had uh, they had two apps. HBO was it HBO Now and HBO Go? Yeah, yeah. Go was like the live streaming one. Now was like the VOD one or something weird. And they're saying it's in an attempt to reduce some of the confusion about which app is for which purpose. HBO Max is AT&T's new streaming service that lets you access the entire HBO library plus additional content like Cartoon Network, blah, 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 blah. You can subscribe to HBO Max directly for a $14.99 monthly fee. But it's also offered for free from many cable providers if you subscribe to HBO. And it's free as part of some AT&T wireless internet or TV plan. A key thing to know is that HBO Max is really an expanded and rebranded version of HBO Now. The company's previous, previous streaming-only service. On most platforms like Apple TV and HBO Now, Apple uh, app was directly updated to become HBO Max. So HBO Go was one of the older ones. I'm confused. I, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I know. I, 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 <laughs> they, no idea. I'm, I'm, Not only I'm, you. I was, I was <laughs> talking to, uh, to Katie last night. And... You know, you see the Spectrum advertisements, and they say, download our app and take us anywhere you are. You can watch. Except. The what? Except. That, that's the thing. She was saying that she was trying to watch TV that her mother has at her house by logging in with her mother's credentials. But it would not let her watch VH1. And Mine doesn't she, let me watch anything. It, but when she was at her mom's house, everything worked. Well, okay, that's part of how it's set up. But the new thing that Spectrum does, so for example, I have Spectrum Internet without cable. Right. When I go to the Spectrum website and try to log in using my parents login it won't yeah. let me watch anything it tells me that i don't have a package so what i have to On do your is home use a, network what i have to do is use a vpn yeah it's a huge pain in the ass or you can just hook up to uh, but that makes no data, sense right? wait a second what if you well, I'm, not, but I'm still talking about on my computer oh let yeah. me ask you this though what happens it kind of defeats the entire purpose it happens, never used to be like this what happens if your parents come to visit you and they want to watch it no, they better bring their uh, cable box with you them. See, that makes no sense that it <laughs> No, it doesn't. It's even it, no, it doesn't work. tied to the cable box. Yeah, like if I go to Spectrum's website or watch Spectrum, let me try it right here. Of course, with their permission, because I would never freeload. Um I I log I go to I go to sign in. I mean, so, so that's false advertising. Watch it anywhere you are. Take it on the go. Well, well now it's working. Another, except at a friend's house. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, 
What's weird is it it is working now, but hold on, let me see if it's actually working. Maybe you have the, maybe you already have the <laughs> VPN running. No, I'm, no. No, I'm not on a VPN. That's weird. Oh yeah, it only connects to your show via VPN. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I run VPN in in browser. Um It's weird it is working now. Interesting. Hmm. It doesn't work on the app though. The 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 Spectrum TV the the app on the Roku doesn't work. Hmm. Huh. I've tried to authenticate it and it just tells me over and over and over again that I do not have a package. I mean, if a Okay, that makes sense because an app, a Roku, right? Yeah. That's usually something stationary. Yeah, so, but it should allow me to watch. It should allow me to. Yeah, but it's easy for them to detect uh, uh, fraud like that, right? You wouldn't set up somebody else's login in your home. Why? My, my, my mother is coming to visit and she wants to watch her favorite show at my house. Yeah, but you already have Time Warner, so you I don't, are no, no, supposed wait, to wait, have wait. the same. No, no, and I don't have Time Warner. No, so it'll work. It only works where a spectrum, uh, where you're in another spectrum home, because that local spectrum is identifying as, hey, I'm part of the network. Why aren't you connecting with the correct credentials? So the one benefit of moving when I'm hopefully moving here at the end of the month is I'll have AT&T, so I don't have to worry about this anymore. But yeah, just, it just doesn't work. And that's because so, you're in another spectrum uh, and, and, system. Uh, yeah, so it says, it says checking my subscription. It says I have to buy it. If I go to the settings. So, Gal, what happens, app, what happens if you stay on uh, data? You don't go on Wi-Fi. It'll well, work. Then it'll work. That's why VPN works. Interesting. Yeah, it, just, it, will not let, it will not authenticate me. You see, that's my point. Is oh, You're right, I'm not, no, It's very misleading. For example, if I was paying half of my parents' spectrum bill to be able to use this stuff, it wouldn't work. I'm not saying I am, but like yeah, the whole... Yeah, yeah but uh, you, you, the thing is, from their perspective, right? You're violating the EULA. You're not, because they don't know that it's not the actual person that is paying for it that is just in somebody else's house wants to watch something. Yeah, but what is their EULA? What is their EULA? No, what, about your, the EULA, I'm meaning if you were paying half. The fact that you're yeah, even paying if I was, no, you're not no, in the that, same right. household, you're violating the EULA. Yeah, no. If so you, if they don't care about situations right. like that. They don't care right. about right. But like my that. point is, you are paying. I mean, I'm paying for TV now. I come to visit you. And yeah. I'm sitting there for six hours and, you know, we're having. But I said, oh, you know, I wanted to watch this thing. It's only 15 minutes. Do you mind? And you say, no. So I log into your computer. And I log into my account on Spectrum, and I want to watch it. No. I understand the uh, explanation. It's, then it's not take us on the go. But that's what, so it's take you on the go as long as you are not in another Spectrum home. And I wonder if there. Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, well, let, let me add something that I may have missed. It's not that it doesn't work. It doesn't work for certain channels. Well, that makes sense, though. Okay. That's part well, of their you thing. You get that error. You get that message. It says if you, if you want to yeah. see all the channels, you need to connect to your home network. It says that right in the app. That's a licensing it. thing. Oh. Yeah. And I, that doesn't that, bother yeah. me. I can use my iPhone out in the Verizon network, and I can use the app. It works, but it says you have a limited number of channels. Okay. What I don't understand is why on my Roku, I cannot log into the same Spectrum account that I'm logging into on my computer and able to watch stuff. It's the same network. So it's either against the EULA or it's not. It, does, it just doesn't make sense. I can literally click on it right here, but I, on the, it, the app will not even give me the option to log what in. What happens if you try the uh, mobile app? Is that the same as the Roku? Uh, I don't know. I don't use the mobile app. Try deleting and reinstalling the Spectrum app. That's a great idea. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. Maybe it'll re-ask me to log in. <laughs> Make sure you, you Alan re is saying, reset the TV too. When you, after you do that, turn the you know, unplug the TV and plug Alan, it in. Alan is saying, anywhere isn't everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's like unlimited until it's not. 
when they say but when they say anywhere they mean anywhere in the house <laughs> anywhere within your footprint uh, well well anywhere they allow anyway I'm I'm fighting a problem now where my Western digital my cloud lost its network connection and it's happened from time to time and all I had to do was just restart it and it works and now it will not so it's wireless connect. no it's wired it's an old it's a generation one <coughs> that is a long time so it's the NIC and you ask the site oh you don't have no network yeah so and, the and only, the only option I have at this point I have a yellow light which means it, it's come up it just can't connect so I've tried different cables, different switches. The only thing I haven't done yet is reset the router, although um, I can't really tell. I tried to ping it, it doesn't show up. Is it connected to, the, to a switch? To a switch. Does yes. it light up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I've had it. I've right. tried different cables, different switches. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have not reset the router yet, because otherwise I'd knock out. Yeah. You know, but, um, you tried to update it to Windows 10, the latest feature? What, the uh, Western Digital Software? <laughs> <laughs> the OS. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I don't know. It's running. Oh, well, that's the runs. reason. If you cannot yeah. update to Windows 10, it's not going to work anymore. We checked. The internet says if something doesn't work, that's the answer. <laughs> that's it. It's always the yeah. an answer. <laughs> so the, the option I have is to do the 40 second reset, which will factory default the doesn't wipe the drive out. Your files stay there, but yeah, it but does the, uh, reset it back to you. Have to reconfigure it again. Credentials, shares, etc. Blah blah blah. So, but I mean, I have more than I use the Western Digital software to back up to other USB connected drives. So I have multiple copies of everything. That's not a problem. But the my cloud is what I use to back up phone stuff and and over the oh you know over the Wi-Fi. So I'm just I want to get that working again. You will. Oh, yeah, what well, to me? you know what it is. It's it's old. It's a two terabyte. It's been around a long time. Um, I'm not necessarily, you know, crushed by it. I just, it's one of those things. You it, you see that happening. You get it. You want to fix it. You want to you want to figure out what it is. So yeah, that sounds like ageism. Spence, I love you. What? It worked. Uninstalling the app. Yeah. Reinstalling it, it allowed me to reauthenticate. Yeah, Spence, you are my hero. When are you, Whoa, what, that, what do you, what do you drink? <laughs> <laughs> it's totally Nothing. working now. Good. It's a fast TV. If you did that that quick. Oh, it's a Roku. Oh, let me tell you, today's specials. Um, I just oh my went... god, I can watch Fox News without going to some shady Russian website on my <laughs> Raspberry Pi, which has been my solution for the past three months. Fox Comrade Oh, this Network. is amazing. Oh, look at this. It's New York. Schuylerville, New York. Flag day. So today for specials I used, I just went to Tom's, Tom's Hardware. And um, they just had a list, top tech deals for this week. And I used that as a, I, it, was, it was fairly easy to do. So you're ready but, for it? So, well, yeah, in a minute. I got it open, but let me just say that Walmart has some unbelievable deals on televisions this week. Prices, just amazing yeah. prices. I actually got mine free this past week. Your what? I got it for free. The TV? Yeah, I just broke oh, it. Oh, 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 right. Yeah, because yeah, of I did it in the name Floyd. of justice. No, you just, you just saw, you saw, you saw a very enthusiastic crowd heading somewhere. Yeah. So, so you went it. in. And yeah. people were just, they were just, they just handed it to you and you left. <laughs> yeah, I got a 48 inch Hisense for free. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And an iPhone 11. Well, yeah, except Apple, Apple apparently is tracking those, which is going to end up being bad yeah. news bears for these people. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be part of their penance is they're going to forgive all those people who stole phones. Jesus. All right. I'm have, so excited. Uh, Thank you, Spence. Oh, you're welcome. I think we lost Nick for the rest of the show. Okay, Nick, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, have a good week. No more TV for you, Nick. Well, yeah. I'm scrolling through and seeing what channels are available. A lot of this stuff is 
uh, as Nick, you said it. Uh, Nick, what? Uh, here's the, the catch. After the specials, there's going to be a quiz about the specials. So you need to pay attention. <laughs> You're not. And if you, uh, <laughs> if you answer the quiz correctly, you get the item that you were That's quizzed right. about. You have to calculate so. the percentage discount. <laughs> For each item. I'm bad at math. That's he's, not a good. He's this not is, even. Not he's good. not listening to us anymore. <laughs> I am listening. I'm not good at math. All right. So you got to figure out. Like it's two ninety nine is regular price, and two twenty nine is now. What's the percentage? Quick, quick, quick. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a number. Oh, okay. All right. All right so we're going to do specials. Yeah. All right. Computers two K now specials for today's the fourteenth. Wow. So I got some stuff that has to happen by the end of the month, like a car inspection. Ben, every it. week when we get to the special, you are amazed by the date. This has to stop. Okay. <laughs> There's a radio show host that does the oh, same thing well. every day. It's like, no. oh wow, I'm another Sunday. About it. <laughs> We're so glad you're here. The, all the stuff you missed. <laughs> all right. So our special offer today is if you're losing it from too too much high tech coverage. Uh, Amnon has graciously now created a uh, two way two things that are out there. It's a new screensaver based on uh, Computer 2K now virtual Zen garden, right? With pictures of a Zen garden and very soothing music, and a live feed from Amnon's fish pond. Oh, with the uh, uh, fish oh, yeah, out Friday, in front of Friday we went we went uh, to eat. Spence and me for lunch, and instead of sitting over at Subway, we said, "Why don't we go and sit around, you know, by the pond at the house?" And we did, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, we couldn't. The only way you could sit at Subway is to sit outside. Yeah, Spence, you just and explained right now why Amnon system crashed. That's it. We took right, it down because everybody the was downloading the uh, downloading yeah. the screensaver. Yeah. yeah, and the fish. I mean, the fish is it's captivating. We have over a million viewers right now, watching live feed from Amazon's Pond. All right. How much you charge for this, Amazon? We didn't I talk don't. about how this wasn't free. I don't. At this point, it's not, it's not working anymore. Oh, okay. Oh well. Yeah, it was too windy to sit out. If you were sitting out at the at the plaza where a subway is, the wind was was gusting, and it could easily flip your sandwich onto the ground. So we didn't go that way. All right, well, like I mentioned, I used uh, Tom's hardware, Tom's guide, uh, to go and look at uh, latest uh, uh, deals this week. These are current. Now, each of these, if you go to the webpage and the link to the webpage is at the bottom of each screen, I'll put it, I'll only put it in uh, chat. There it is. Oh, nope, nope. I just clicked on it myself and went to it. Sorry. Let me get back to the. Uh... I can't do that from where I'm at right now. That's all right. They, I'm showing it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, you will find the listing there, and he does. He breaks it down a couple of different ways. You might say, "Well, here's at Walmart. Here's at uh, another like Newegg. Here's at uh, B and H." But what I did here was just uh, capture each one. It tells you where it's at. But to, if you want to find the link to that deal. You don't have to go searching for it. Just go to Tom's guide and you'll be able to click on it there and take you to that deal. I just didn't have time to embed them in the, in the PDF. So, okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Apple doesn't usually have huge sales and this is not a huge sale, but it's a good sale. Uh, Apple MacBook Air 13 2020 uh, was 999, now 949 at, at B&H. This is a 13 inch. 13.3 inch retina display, uh, touch ID, 10th generation Core i3, um, Intel Iris Plus graphics. Uh, we also have uh, AirPods on sale, was 159, now 139. This is also a B&H. Uh, we've got Beats Solo 3 wireless headphones, was 299, now 189. Quick, what's the percentage? What's the percentage? Hurry up. Uh. That's $110. Uh, 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 four? Four percent. That's it. <laughs> Something like that. But um, that's, a good, that's a good deal. That's $110 off the regular price for Beast Solo 3s. Samsung uh, Galaxy Watch Active 2 
normally 299, now 229 at B&H. Uh, Canon EOS Rebel uh, T7i camera was 899, now 799, 100 bucks off. Geez, I haven't looked at, at digital SLRs in a while. 24 megapixels. Is that typical? I guess you can get more. It is, but it's all, as it is, though, it's all about the lens, really. Sure. I mean, if the, way, the last one I had was an Olympus, and it was 10 megapixel, and I thought that yeah. was incredible. And I have you a get a good on. lens. Though, even, you can get a very cheap camera. Not very cheap, but you can get a cheaper camera, and if you get a, like that, and you get a $1,000 lens for that camera, it, yeah, it it'll, it'll be difference. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to look at what the, F, the minimum f-stop is, and, the, and the, mm -hmm. uh, so you need to get enough light. That was the big problem I had with my Olympus, is the lenses I got came as a kit. They were good. But low light wasn't great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's all the B and H at Walmart. Samsung savings up to nine hundred dollars off four K TVs at Samsung. So after the discount for two ninety five, you can get a fifty inch four K Samsung Smart TV at Walmart. Damn! I mean, to look at these these incredible incredible deals on televisions. So check that out. They also have uh, Vizio 50-inch 4K for 358. Oh, it was 358 for 288. Um, at Walmart, they also have a, an HP 15 mainstream laptop, uh, Core i5, eight gig of memory, uh, 256 SSD, was 599 now, 5, 449, 150 off. They've got an Asus ROG ROG. That, is that a good gaming? Machine yeah, that's the, that's the Republic of Gamers uh, okay. brand. 15.6 inch. Um, let's see here. What do we got? Core i5, 8 gig of memory, 512 SSD, uh, GTX 1660 Ti GPU. It's oh, yeah. normally $12.99 for 949 350 off. Huh. And they also have a, a Motile 14 inch laptop. This was apparently Motile. It says a collaboration between THX, Motile, and AMD. And this is uh, normally $699 for $399, $300 off. It's a Ryzen 5, 8 gig of memory, 256 SSD. Uh, continuing with Walmart, Google Smart Home TV kit was $74, now $45. It's a Chromecast and a Google Home Mini for $45. Bucks. It says normally the Home Mini costs $49 by itself. Plus, it comes with a $10 Voodoo credit. Uh, Walmart also has a Roku streaming stick 4K for $69. Oh, was $69. Now it's $46. Bucks. And um, it says this, some of these prices they're saying were as good as Black Friday or close. Uh, Samsung 32-inch curved gaming LCD was $240 now. Now $149, $100 off. 32 inch, amazing. It said uh, uh, Samsung, it's the cheapest 32 inch Samsung monitor they've seen and $20 cheaper than it was on Black Friday. Good deal. Okay, continuing Walmart, Sony PlayStation 4 Pro was $399, now $299. And this is, this is next one is a great deal. Uh, now this isn't the fastest AC router. This is a Netgear Nighthawk. Uh, but very, very sufficient for most people's needs. AC 2100 2, Nighthawk, 179 normally for 89 bucks. So uh, cheapest price has been out there ever. Uh, Echo Dot with Clock was 59, now 39 at Amazon. Uh, Echo Show 5 was 89, now 49 at Amazon. And finally, uh, Fire HD 8 tablet was 79, now 59 at Amazon. So suddenly there are deals. For a while there, we were languishing. There wasn't, didn't seem to be much, much really on sale. And we'll, we'll eventually get back to the Staples and, and uh, Best Buy and so on. But there are deals out there. I think things are war warming up. Availability of some out of stock items is getting better too. And let me just remind everybody that if you want to to look at this at your leisure, you don't have to just come here and, and watch the whole segment again. The 
file is available on computers2know.com slash special. And it's a PDF you can download and print it if you like. Yeah. All right, Spence, thank you All very right. much. That's the specials for June 14th, 2020. Is it already June 14th? No, it's actually June 13th, but we messed up. Oh, okay. All right. 919-518-9773, Computers 2K Voice on Skype. Nick is gone already. He's probably laying in his bedroom watching something from New York. Can't hear a thing, a peep from him. All right. Let's see what else is, uh, what else happened last week. Everybody heard about the Internet Archive. Uh, the Internet Archive's National Emergency Library is finished. The nonprofit repository for digital preservation, which began offering millions of ebooks for free to address the closure of libraries during the pandemic, buckled under a joint lawsuit filed by major publishers, including Penguin, Random House, and HarperCollins. Publishers said. Lending out books without compensation was mass copyright infringement. The digital library will close next week, which is this week. Archive of books was initially invite only and only allowed a given file to be downloaded a limited number of times at once with each rental limited to 14 days. But then the pandemic hit and libraries closed, so the Internet Archive rep responded by making all the books accessible to everyone with no limits. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do as far as uh, the Internet Archive. They are... <laughs> They are. Okay. It's 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 lonely out here in the Arctic tundra. So you know, like I, people just stop by and harass me. Yeah, people just come down there and <laughs> to yeah. visit you. It's the middle of summer. They're all wishing it was winter again. So, so, uh, like, you you can get all. I mean, those of you that that probably don't know it by that name, it's the way back machine where you can go and look at websites and what they were like at different points in history. The internet is forever. Yeah. So they also have, you, you can save a lot of your stuff on internet archive. You can back up, but remember there's no, it's not secured. It's everybody can see it. It's the whole point the, the, of, of internet archive is so you can put, your information there, and everybody can go see it. All the shows that I do here, they go on Internet Archive also. So it's a, one form of a backup and another form of embedding in case something happens with YouTube. But they, uh, there were, there were threats that they were going to get sued. And I guess they buckle. Ransomware. Oh, ransom attack. The city of Knoxville in Tennessee was forced to shut down its entire computer network following a ransomware attack that took place overnight and targeted the city's offices. Knoxville has a population of over 180,000. 
It's Tennessee's third largest city after Nashville and Memphis. And it's also part of the Knoxville Metropolitan Statistical Area. Computers on Knoxville Network were encrypted overnight. Some heads are probably going to fly. What's that? Spence, what are you what? watching? What are you watching? No, I do the noises in the hall. Oh. Um, Gal, you're quiet. I'm looking at all of the... I went into uh, Reddit's data hoarder section to yeah. see what they're saying about Internet Archive. Oh. Yep. They, uh, yeah, they, it's a very interesting subreddit there. Um, no, it's not. Nobody, nobody has a solution, and they also understand where yeah. the, uh, the, the publishing house are coming from. Of course. But then again, I, I would have thought that a publishing house would understand the benefit of it and, you know, form an alliance with the Internet Archive and make, it, make the offer valid somehow, yeah. even, even if it is for a limited time. I don't know. Like the money grab is always so obvious. Uh, and yeah, but then again, they deal, they deal with peddling knowledge, right? They don't care about, uh, where, whether that knowledge reaches someone or not, they want the buck. Yeah, it is what it is. The way that I look at it is they were actually been. They were, the Internet Archive was doing them a favor. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. It's like, look at the plus side of something. Yeah. Instead of how does it hurt me. Right. And yeah, it's not something they would have initiated. I understand. It's not something... Uh, I mean, if they would have thought about it, right, then especially shareholders, etc., right, would find it very, very strange, right? But then again, yes, it's, it, it's something like this needs to happen eventually. Yeah. And trying to block it is, I don't know. Yeah. Look how to embrace it and figure out how to take part in it instead of shutting it down. There is something good in the initiative. It might not be perfect, there is something very good in it. So why, why block it? Why, why stop it from happening? Because you're not making money. Yeah, yep. so it can't be everything about making money. Everything is about making money. Making money is great and it's important and it feeds people. And I'm not, I mean, I like the money I make, right? But it, there's, it can't be be the only uh, uh, priority, right? And it can't be number one. It can be number three. It can be number five. There can uh, be a lot of priorities one. before yeah. that, right? It's number one. That's, I have a problem <laughs> with that. And no, I'm, I'm not a communist. <laughs> I just have a problem with it being number one. Yeah, no, they're, they're doing good. There's no doubt. And, and, uh, they just came again. And I mean, they have a lot of movies. You don't see the movie industry going after them. Oh, they'll go after them when it comes, uh, when it becomes uh, one of the things of them being a nonprofit organization, right? They don't have a, a, a fantastic infrastructure. They have a good enough infrastructure. Right? I don't and know. So, it seems to me that they have a fantastic. Uh, so they can't support everyone going there and streaming at once, right? So 
I don't know that, that you probably would, won't happen. I, I don't know that you want to stream from there at once. Uh, their speeds are not that great. Right. So you would download and then play it locally. You won't stream. Yeah. So now back to, to Ransom, uh, Knoxville is not the only city or not the only one that was this last week. Honda. Has anybody told them about No More Ransom, the, the site we talked about? We time? talked about it a few times, yeah. yeah. Oh, to tell, uh, you told Knoxville and Honda? Uh, <laughs> hopefully they know. Honda has confirmed a cyber attack that brought parts of its global operations to a standstill. The company said in a brief statement Tuesday that the attack caused production issues outside of its headquarters in Japan. Work is being undertaken to minimize the impact and to restore full functionality of production, sales, and development activities. It follows a tweet from the company now pinned to the top of its Twitter feed stating that it's Customer service and financial services are unavailable due to the attack. Honda is one of the largest vehicle manufacturers in the world, employing more than 200,000 staff with factories in UK, North America, and Europe. Um, again, it's th these... these uh, Cyber criminals are getting smarter and smarter and smarter, and they're persistent. So they uh, they manage to to snag some of these big companies every now and then, or cities or whatever. Cities are really easy because they don't have they don't put a lot of money to toward good infrastructure of IT. Now, we talked a lot about Zoom and problems and China and this and then the other. U.S. video conferencing company Zoom issued a statement on Tuesday, Thursday acknowledging that the Chinese government requested that it suspends the accounts of several U.S. and Hong Kong-based Chinese activists for holding events commemorating the anniversary of 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre. Zoom claims that it only took action because the Chinese government informed the company that the activity is illegal in China, and that meeting metadata shows showed a significant number of mainland China participants. Zoom said it does not have the ability to block participants from a certain country, and so it made the decision to end some of the meetings and suspend the host accounts. Zoom's, freedom, huh? It's a freedom. Yeah. But they said that it will no longer allow requests from the Chinese government to impact anyone outside of mainland China. And that it is working on technology that will allow it to remove or block participants based on geography. The statement indicates that Zoom is agreeing to China's demands to construct an in-company censorship appar apparatus Green. to prevent mainland users from accessing sensitive data. What? If this happens, every, every company does this. Yeah. They want to operate in China. They need to work by Chinese laws. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these, these stupid companies say that, oh, we care about freedom and all this other bullshit. Yeah. Yet they're here. They are banning people for protests that, that we're just talking about. Right. Tiananmen Square. They weren't doing <laughs> anything. No. Right. But all these companies are so hypocritical. These are the same companies now that are releasing statements how they care about people's freedoms and treatments of individuals. Yeah. That are ban they're banning people for talking about the Chinese government killing people in the 80s. Virtue signaling, that's all it is. Yeah, 100%. Virtue signaling and gaslighting. Oh, I, well. I, I, it's absolutely amazing how the, the 
intensity and level of gaslighting has just ex exponentially risen in the last couple of weeks. Well, it's just frustrating because Zoom, Zoom will be the same company that will release a tweet, tweet that they're, oh, we're standing up for we're standing up for rights and all this other stuff. Well, obviously not. Because if you cared about well, rights, you wouldn't States, be... they do. I, 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 don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I don't... Standing up for rights is not a geographic issue. You're either for or against it. But as a, as a, um, as a commercial entity. Well, right? I get it. Yeah, I get it. So... It's business. But, don't, but then don't, don't feed me this backdoor BS that you, all this, you somehow care about the rights of individuals and, and all this other nonsense. You either do or you don't. And I get it. There's a Chinese, the Chinese, the country of China brings a significant amount of business to Zoom. So I get it, but just be consistent. That's all I'm asking. Just be consistent. If you're going to say you care about human rights and all this other BS, then care about it. But don't. But don't give me this, oh, we care about in the United States, but not in China. I just, it's just, it's, it's stupid. It is. I'm not, as a company, they should do what the Chinese government asks because that's where they make their money. I get it. But then don't on the other side put out tweets and stuff about how you're, you, you want to stand up for all this other nonsense. If you want to stand up, you would do it to the Chinese government. But you won't because it's a lot of money, and I don't blame them for that. It's a business. They have shareholders. They're a publicly traded company. They have, they have, a, they have an obligation to do smart business decisions, and, and, I, and they should. But then don't tell me that, oh, you all of a sudden care about freedoms and rights. It's just a, it's just a load of crap. Well, they, they are saying it, but they can say it. Yeah, they Nobody can say it, but it's just not them. true. You can right. just tell it's not true. Right. right. How about making an impact where you can make an impact? You can make an impact in China. If you cared about people's freedoms, you wouldn't no, ban people can. from they China. they can disappear from China. That's yeah, all. They won't, they because they're, because they won't because right, they're but wimps. That means, but that means that they will no longer provide the services in China, right? So okay. if you provide the services, within limits, right, of what is allowed by the law. And you, and most of the times the law, right, the letter of the law can be bent to a certain degree when it comes to certain things. And yes, the government has control over that, right, and can step in, but think about all of the other, uh, uh, other instances where the government is missing that, just because it's not happening on a government platform, it's happening on their platform, right? So we can say a lot of things, but then again, they've enabled point-to-point -point, uh, encryption now, right? That puts, that puts a dent in a government like China, right, agenda. Here in the States, that happens as well, right? But this is not widely spoken about, about what uh, uh, the three-letter agency that we should not name, right, <laughs> uh, does. So, I mean, the, the fact is that here in the States, they are allowed to state their opinion, and probably in China, Stating that opinion will hurt them, will cause them to uh, disappear from the, the, the playing field. And they're choosing to be on that playing field. Now, because they are playing by the rules, calling them hypocritical, I don't, I don't think I agree. Uh, the freedoms that we have in the States, right? They're the freedoms that's in the States. And just trying to compare the States to the rest of the world, I think that's hypocr hypocritical. Every state is different. And hey, they did host the meeting until the government stepped in and said, stop, right? Yeah, well, then if, if that's the case, then I would appreciate Zoom stop shoving political bullshit down my throat on Twitter if they actually cared about human rights. That's, all, that's my point, is if they actually cared, they could. They could put a stand out, but they're not. Instead, what they're doing is they're pandering to a group of people on Twitter, and then on the other hand, Literally, on the other side, they are banning people for just talking. Literally just talking. So, I mean, that, that's the part that pisses me off. I understand that there's different rules They're around the law. Following the letter fine. of the law, that's not... 
No, Look, no, no the but then, then, then you don't care about human rights. Then you don't. If you're, if, if the if we're supposed, if if something is is ethically and no, morally wrong, then you shouldn't care about the law. But That's they what we don't been told have a recourse forward. where they can uh, uh, go and object that. There's no world government that says, hey, China is acting bad. No, no. China is acting by their own rules, and Correct. the US is acting by their own Zoom rules. Zoom doesn't have to follow the rules of China. Yes, they have in China. They don't. In China, but the thing is, the thing but is, they that, don't. They don't have to operate in China. If they cared about human rights, they wouldn't follow through with these ban requests. No, but let's let, wait, wait, the, wait. Those wait, are wait. not requests, okay? Those are orders. Okay, not so, then, so, 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 so you're proving let's, my. Let's so you're clear. <laughs> yeah, you're proving my point that they right. that, that that they care about something until somebody tells them not to. So that's but exactly the, the, within the law. They're not above the law in anything. Yeah, but then you then you have to look at it from a moral perspective. If if you want to operate in every country in the world, it means you have to look the other way, and maybe go against your mission statement and principles for the company. That's what Nick is trying to say. If you really are for human rights, it goes across the board. Then you won't operate there. I mean, so that's, I'm, that's so, I'm, so for that statement, I'm coming back with a question, right? How would the landscape look, right, specifically in a place like China, when no other participant from outside China will step in because they don't like the way the Chinese government acts? Well, that's China's problem. No, <laughs> I, mean, I agree that's China's problem, but that also means that the Chinese people, right, they will never get an alternative point of view, ever. But that's that's kind of the way, the way the policies towards China from the U.S. have been that way for a long time. Thinking if we expose them enough to democracy, and we expose them enough to freedom, that they'll change. Well, the people of China want it absolutely, but the government doesn't. Don't, don't no be so way. sure about that. By the way, don't <laughs> the be government? don't be so sure that the people of China want it. They are. I'm tr I'm I'm some, pretty. I, you're right. Some people do. Right. Some people yeah. do. The, the government of China certainly doesn't. Yeah, of course not. The same way this government here in the U.S., right? They cringe whenever somebody mentions, you know, somebody says something good about the way Chinese uh, government are handling things, right? And and the way, you know, some some authoritarian aspects of, of a Chinese government uh, would benefit in, in this place. Or, God forbid, talk about socialism, right? As it happens and my, we, my whole we, point my whole point is if you want to make a moral statement as a company and this is my personal opinion if you want to say for example golf i want to say i care about x cause whatever it may be then put your money where your mouth is if you care about the cause then support it and just because it's against the law in china so now ethics and morals are out the window. I mean that. So, 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 so I mean, it's ethically. I mean, you could talk about political things all over the. You can look at the treatment of women in Middle Eastern countries and say, oh well, I guess companies, those companies don't support female rights because they support countries that treat women as third class citizens. I don't think I mean, any of them are supporting these countries. Yeah, but they are. They're operating They're within their limits. Oh, then no. they shouldn't be operating if they actually if they if they were actually for the morals and and did what they said they were going to do then they wouldn't be operating. That's there are companies that make a big deal out of a single issue where they say we won't we will not cater to any customers that abide by X, but at the same time, you look at what they'll do. You you I, I know somebody who doesn't want to shop at a specific store because of the way they treat their employees. Right. But I said, well, do you realize that this the, the same same, you buy a phone that's made in China that you don't know what's happening in the factory where they work, where the suicide rate is really high and all these other things. I see you can't, it's, it's great to have a moral high ground, but at the, if you, a, a company that was, it, I, it's business is business. That's just the way it is. You want to, you want to be in business, you're going to have to abide by the rules of the country you're playing in. But, you know, I, and I acknowledge that. It's just that don't lecture someone on exactly. how moral you are when you look the other way to operate in another country. Exactly. That's all. That's all I'm looking for. Yeah. I just, okay. just, some just some semblance of, of fairness. Show me 
one, one human being, show me one organization, right? That is so totalitary, uh, uh, you know, has a totalitarian uh, truth that says, uh, not totalitarian, but like that has this total truth that there is no single action and single word that uh, contradicts something they said or do. I don't think there is a single instance in human, in, uh, in human history, right? I think that if we'll even go and scrutinize on uh, Gandhi and Martin Luther King and, you know, historical figures that, that uh, we put, um, uh, put on a pedestal, right? Even they probably have black spots where they had to do one thing while they said something else. And so these are companies, they're, they're here mostly for their business, right? But in troubling times, they operate in the United States in a place, right? Where, where uh, um, uh, airing out opinions is something that is not only uh, a, a, a privilege, right? It is one of the top privilege, right? The First Amendment. And so um, it's the fact that they are not 100% always doing that because they're not able. They are doesn't able. mean that they're they, always able. What, what do you mean by able? The choos- they are able. The, the, the choosing not to do business in a place where you are, you're doing a very big yeah. part of your yeah. business. Yeah. How about, how about, how about, Right. How about stop lecture? How about stop lecturing me on stuff when you're going to say to sit there and then ban the company? You. They but the said bu- bu- they bullshit. Are they sent me emails right? and everything. I mean, it's so like you a- feel that by them supporting yes. something, they're lecturing you? Yes. Why? Because they're shoving in my face. I just don't appreciate any company in general. I, I agree. You with either want golf, free speech but- or you don't want free speech. You you want free speech, but you don't want to listen to it. Then don't listen to it. I guess it comes down to what are you willing to overlook? Exactly. Um, That's how my far point. are you willing to go to get to get to a point? And every human nature says that you have everybody has confirmation bias. Everybody's got implicit implicit bias that's built into them from their upbringing that says that such and such is acceptable because they're my friends. But if somebody else does it, it's wrong. But the point is, as a company, they're walking a line and they, make, they have to make a conscious decision to say, in this case, we're gonna overlook this. Look at what happened with South Africa years ago, the boycotts that went on. If you were a company operating in South Africa, you were, there were, there were uh, protests, there were demands, there were courts, court cases to say, you need to stop operating. IBM had to pull out their, uh, their operations in South Africa because of what was going on, because people protested, stockholders protested. So companies have to understand that they're, it's, it's how many people are you going to piss off to be in business? That's the way it, that's the way it works. No. You're not gonna, you're not, there's always going to be somebody that's not a fan. Yeah, but the point here is, I think, is that they shut down accounts of Americans. Yeah, and, and that's the, that's the thing. They made that conscious decision, and they have to live with the, with the, with the, with the, yeah. uh, with the, uh, uh, I mean, results of that. And, and let me be fair here. This is not just Zoom. I mean, Apple, m- Apple might be the mo- the, might be the biggest, yep. um, yeah. Yeah. The, the biggest hypocrite in the world. I mean, they are paying slave labor to get phones built. And, and they say that they care about social and humanitarian issues. I mean, it's just a it's a crock. It's a crock of crap. Yeah. That's all. I just, uh, I would just appreciate, me as a consumer, I would just appreciate if a company was going to make their opinion, which they're the right to have, if they're going to make that so public, shove it down my throat, I would just appreciate if they actually stood by. You're you're going to see, you're going to see now the, the results of a lot of what's happening with companies just this past week. What's going to happen to their sales? What's going to happen to their, like the NFL? Oh yeah. uh, NASCAR. All these, yep. all these, they've made public statements mm-hmm. that you'll see now what the result of that is going to be, good or right or wrong. And I'm not judging mm-hmm. them whether they're right or wrong in their statement. I'm just going to say it will reflect in their future business. 
and they've, they've made it they've made a judgment to say that it's more important than we do this and we don't do it yeah so, and that's the right to do so yeah absolutely have the right to do it sorry Emma. let's face it you're gonna that's you're, all right no matter no matter what you do somebody's not gonna be happy All right. Let's see what else we have here. Listen to this. Cox Communication is lowering internet upload speeds in entire neighborhoods to stop what it considers excessive usage in a decision that punishes both heavy internet users and their neighbors. Cox, a cable company with about 5.2 million broadband customers in the United States, has been sending notices to some heavy Internet users, warning them to use less data and notifying them of neighborhood-wide speed decreases. In the case we will describe in this article, that goes a gigabit customer who was paying 50 extra dollars per month for unlimited data was flagged by Cox because he was using 8 terabytes to 12 terabytes a month. Cox responded by lowering the upload speed on the gigabit download plan from 35 megabits to 10 megabits for the customer's whole neighborhood. Cox confirmed to Ars Technica that it has imposed neighborhood-wide slowdowns in multiple neighborhoods in case cases like this one but didn't say how many excessive users are enough to trigger a speed decrease that doesn't make uh, any sense no it doesn't and but i know why they are doing whole neighborhood yeah because they don't have a system to do anything right <laughs> they can go to the central point in the neighborhood and and do something to that yeah. but the, that's really uh, that's really unfortunate yeah i mean that, like that's and i'm paying 50 dollars extra a month for unlimited don't tell me what not to use that, and what uh, to honest to god with those speeds you drop that and get a couple bonded dsl lines and you're <laughs> you're yeah. good to go you can get two or three megabits up on dsl yeah i had that's the, a that's a disgrace it is I mean, <laughs> That, it, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, the only thing that I see here is that they got their name mentioned in the news. But, but again, does it, does it matter? Because in most cases, you don't have a secondary ISP to even use. In, so, yeah, in a lot of, you're right. Yeah, so great. Right. Oh, I hate, I hate, I hate, you know, I hate Cox Communications. Well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> right. You need to pull internet out of thin air? <laughs> Every time I drive by the local roads around Apex now in an area, they're putting in fiber and it's AT&T and that's great. But are they going to pull it into my neighborhood? No, nah, there aren't enough people here. There aren't enough people who want to have it for them. For the, maybe they eventually will. We've been begging them for years now because the, the whole infrastructure here is all, all copper wire, twisted pair. And it's in such bad shape that some people can't even get phone service here. It's just deteriorated. They haven't upgraded anything. So you want to hear something interesting. Um, so I'm hopefully I'm in the process of buying a house. Um, and I looked up, I looked up uh, ISPs over there. It's about 15 minutes from here. So I didn't know what was available. So it turns out AT&T has got their um, uh, Uverse service over there. I said, oh, that's, that's cool. So I then went to um, Spectrum's website just for the hell of it, punched in the same address, which is the, the, which is the address of the house, and Spectrum offers gigabit at that location. Yeah, they do that in... Uh, Isn't that... F yeah, they do that every... Depending everywhere. on the competition, they give you yeah. whatever the so they can. Yeah. I, live, I live like 12 minutes from there now, and the most i can get is um uh uh 400 by or 500 by 20 or 30 
But at this new location, they've got the service called Internet Gig, which is 940 plus megabits up now. It's $110 a month compared to $50 for UVerse. But how are they pushing Gig over coax? They can. You, they have can. Have the, you have to have the correct modem. So that, but the, my question they, is, is why are they not offering that everywhere? Because it's not like they're having to do upgrades. Because to the, they'd have they have to upgrade. Up in a lot of cases, they'd have to upgrade the physical plant. It depends on the equipment okay. that they have. The amplifiers, the, 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 all the filtering and all that's done. The system is balanced to the point of where they have to basically tune it for dB loss over distance okay. and all that. So if they went and changed it, they could add. And the way they get that speed is if they, they would just bundle more channels together. If you look at your, you can go in, most, most uh, cable modems can be accessed 192.168.100.1. If you put that in, you'll bring up the screen of your modem and you'll be able to look at outbound and inbound channels and what's actually bound and what the DB losses are. So all of that can be done. If you've got enough available inbound channels, you can get close to a gig. Yeah. It, but that's, they had to recently, that's why they redid their networking a number of years ago, uh, got rid of the broadcasting the analog stuff over the cable because they wanted to free up more potential digital channels to use for new programming and for data. It's just very interesting that, you know, I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even think Spectrum, I mean, I knew that Spectrum offered it, but they're not even trying to be, the, the, fr the weird thing is, is, you know, as Gall said, they're, you know, it's competition, but they're not even competing. It's literally more than double the price of Uvers. Um, now, I don't know how good the Uverse service is, but I can't imagine that it's two times worse than no, it's fine. the Spectrum service. So it's, it's, it's like, yes, they're competing, but not really because you'd be an idiot to go for the Spectrum gigabit instead of the AT&T gigabit, which is actually fiber. No, the Spectrum gigabit has, uh, it's fortified with vitamins and minerals. Oh. Great. So, yeah. Non-GMO. Non-GMO. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's it. <laughs> the data comes in and it's not, it's not uh, processed. The, yeah, but but the other it? interesting thing about the gigabit is, um, you know, it's, it's, it would obviously be dependent on the coax in your house as well. Um, but I guess they would deal with that. Well, on typically what they'll do is they bring the fiber to the house and they have, a, they have an adapter outside that converts it to gigabit ethernet right there. Spectrum doesn't have fiber. No, I'm, I'm whatever whatever the connection, whether it's fiber or coax. They, the coax, yeah, spectrum would be coax. AT&T, yeah, I know, would, would bring fiber. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, the, but like, so let so they bring it though. But if you've got like old crappy RJ four or whatever run through your house, then what? Yeah, it's not. You have to run a new cable. To yeah, the cable to the cable. I had to do that. Uh, my cable modem is downstairs again because the, the, I ran a dedicated cable up the side of my house into my attic and down into my office years ago because every time they tune their network, my connection would drop. And they'd have to have them come out and they'd say, well, and they'd go back and forth. And suddenly it would start to work again with no changes in my house because they fixed the network. So now to avoid that, I have it as close as possible to the amplifier that they put in my crawl space. I have a single cable going, short cable coming up from there, going to my cable modem, and I don't have a lot of outages anymore. Hmm. You've had a terrible, you've had terrible luck with ISPs. Yeah. Well, I had a, a, an interesting experience with AT and T last week. Uh oh. So I have Spectrum, and I also have Uverse as a backup because it was slower speed and the price was right but last year the price went up to 90 some and i called and i said now nah, look i am not going to keep it for, for that who? kind of price but the what who 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 went up to at and the oh, okay. and it was 50 up i mean 50 down and five up but it's great for you know a backup and with what I do here, I, I, I have to have internet. So the nice thing about Uverse and why I say it works great is, and I don't know if that's the way they do it now with new, they actually have batteries in their boxes outside that will keep the service going even if power goes down in the neighborhood. 
with Spectrum, the minute the power goes away, Spectrum goes away. TV, internet, it's out. So I called them and I said, look, no, I went and I, I, I so last year, wait, so last year when it was 50, and I said, it's going up, I'm going to do away. She said, well, wait a second, we can update you to 75 and your monthly bill will be 55000 and I looked. Sure enough, they they, they had that on the on as, as a promotion. So I said, "Yeah, that's fine." Last Monday, I got the notice that the fifty-five went up to seventy-five because the promotion is over. So I called and I said, "Okay, I I'm not going to keep it." While we were talking. I'm going. I'm looking uh, with AT and T. You can actually change your plan. I mean, I don't know. You may be able to do the same thing with Spectrum, but I saw that the 75 is in the middle, and then they had a hundred. The 75 was 75 dollars. Then they had a hundred megabits, which was 60 dollars. 60, 65, I can't remember. It was, it was lower. So while we were talking and I saw it and I said, you know, you guys have a lot of nerve. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'm looking on your website and you have a hundred megabits that is $65. Yet you raise my fee to $75 for 75 She said, well, the 75 is not being offered anymore. I said, so what now? She said, let me look. So she came back and she said, well, we can upgrade you to, to 100 and it's actually $60, not 65 and you get $10 promotion, so it's going to be $50. So it actually went down to 50, by $5, and the, the speed went up to... One one hundred. I she said for a year. I said okay. Can we sign three years? That it will keep it at that price because that price it's it's okay for backup and for the reruns and all. She said I don't have any facility to do it more than a year. You just need to call next year. I said when are you going to get fiber in our neighborhood? She said I don't know. Uh, but right now a hundred is the fastest. So I said, okay, go ahead and change it, and we'll uh, we'll we'll stay with that. And and that was the day, Nick, when you were doing your show. So it was Tuesday, mm -hmm. Tuesday like in noon, and in the evening, suddenly I couldn't stream anymore on the reruns because it couldn't connect. They were doing an update. So they were. That's when. When Restream was having the problem. Oh, Remember? yeah, yeah. Restream was having that yeah. issue, yeah. Oh, I'm glad it wasn't just me. Yeah. And uh, No, Nick, it's just you. It can I mean, happen. it's fine. I can handle but it. it's, it's, you, it just goes to show you that you need to stay on top of them and, and do your research before. I mean, I was lucky that I saw this. But do your research before, beforehand. And they always find something to do to satisfy you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to call Spectrum when I, if, I, if and when I get ready to move here and say, all right, well, hey, I'm going to cancel my service unless you can give me a gig internet for $50 a month. Yeah, because that's what I get from AT&T. So and they will, they will most definitely to? say no, so well, that's, which is fine. You, you, all, you, all you can tell them is, what Why are not? you going to do to keep me as a customer? Yeah. What do you say, Gal? I said, why, why would they say no? They will yeah. say no. They will not. I mean, you know how many times I told They don't them? say yes immediately. I oh, told fine. them. I'm not going to wait for them. I can just go get $50 service from AT&T. It's, it's uh, I, I mean, I talk to them a few times, and every now and then they'll drop it a little bit. But you tell them, hey, look, I also have Uber's. 
and it's fine for me and they're actually the service is better than yours I say well okay so you can stay with them so it's it's uh they they're they're not i don't know it's like they're not in the customer satisfaction business well i would make the argument that at their size of a of a company right it is it costs more for them to be in the customer satisfaction business than it is to even have you to, to lose you as a customer i'm not following they're such a large company and have so many customers right that for them to have a decent customer satisfaction would cost more than just oh oh business. oh i see yeah and that's probably a bad way to look at it but i, I they just don't seem to care and uh, again in a lot of cases they're a single they're a single singular isp i don't believe i can get any i can't get anything else where i live right now other than spectrum so mm -hmm. they don't they can they can tell me they can raise my bill by five hundred dollars a month and i'm either going to have the service or cancel it there's no yeah there's no in between my my internet bill is seventy five dollars a month. It's outrageous. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm still I still haven't cut cable TV off, and I'm wondering what my internet service is gonna be like. How much? If it's if you've got the highest, um, it's not the highest spectrum package uh, on an internet, then it'll be. It'll be like sixty bucks for the first year, and then it, 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 seventy-five is what what I pay. We'll see. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But it will definitely be interesting. Yep, I'm looking forward. I'm gonna say I gotta I gotta give I'll give AT&T a call this week and see uh, see what the deal is. And um, another story here that has to do with. DMC and stuff. It looks like Twitch streamers. You got that story, right, Nick? Yeah, oh yeah. Did you? Did, is it true? Well, yeah. For some reason. Okay. So uh, let me let me read it. Or yeah, unless you ahead. want to explain. Yeah, I'll explain it. So, okay. uh, DMCA, which is the you know the cop copyright thing. You'll see it all over the place. The di what's it? D Digital Millennium. Digital Millennium. Uh, yeah, something. Something Copyright Act. DMCA. Um, Twitch streamers for the longest time, haven't had issues with uh, DMCA takedown. So, for example, uh, a, a music, you know, a license holder to, to music can go, can go to YouTube and say, hey, this is our, our property. It's our song. It's our whatever. We, you know, we, we, in some cases, they take it down. In other cases, they just take the ad revenue on it. Well, now they're finally, now Twitch is finally playing by the DMCA rules and taking down uh, Twitch vods and, and stuff that included dmca content so um it's nothing new for the internet youtube's been dealing with it for 10 years but you, twitch is now finally um dealing with dmca which is insane to me that it's taken this long but now of course there's a big outrage by the uh, by the snowflakes on twitch about it because they have to follow the law <laughs> um, which is you can't use other people's copyrighted content and so make money you, on it are you using any copyright uh material uh, that you need to worry about at this point because we don't make any money on twitch no i mean we play videos from youtube that sometimes have music from trailers um so could there be an issue yes but we're such a small fish i don't foresee it being one all right it's just i don't foresee it being an issue but for these big streamers, it absolutely is. Uh, it, it, it's just interesting that, that it's how, you know, you're saying that uh, YouTube has been dealing with it for 10 years. Oh, yeah. And they have not been dealing with it the right way. They, no, they, they have Nobody have, does. Yeah, they don't have the facilities, the, the, the software, the technology, the whatever, to yeah. make the right decision. So, I mean, finally, I don't get flagged every week for the opening of Computers 2K now. 
which for years, every week, I had to go and show them that I have a license. But now Facebook is doing that. <laughs> and it's weird. It's the same music. And it's two completely different organizations, companies, whatever, are claiming that they are. That's always the problem. It's ridiculous. Yep. Completely. All right. Well, it's the time that somebody wants to talk about something else. Oh, Gal, you were working on something last week when we were. Yeah, chat server, but I'm, I've been um, busy with other stuff, so I haven't gotten to it yet. Oh. Okay. All right. Chai is back. Yes. Did he have fun? Yes, I. Huh? Have fun. Yeah, of course. Good. We thought about uh, coming over later today. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll be over too. Oh, yeah, what time? I have some friends who are interested too. <laughs> yeah, maybe Can we, we bring we something? Invite everyone, including everyone who's listening to this, we're going to meet. Yeah, them. just I don't give, just later. don't tell them. Just don't tell them where. We'll turn yeah. it into a cookout. Okay, guys. Well, it was fun. Um, thanks, Nick, Gal, Spence, and good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac, Norm, Katie and Dana, and Dina, Arlette, if you're listening. Thank you for tuning to Computers 2K Now. We hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing. Back up your hard drive and update your virus scanner. We'll be back here next Sunday at 9. But you can always reach us at computerstukenow.com. Tonight at 7, Nick hosts Against the Norm. ATNshow.com. 7 till 8. And if you're in Wilmington, you can also hear him on... Big Talker, 106.7 FM. See you next week. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.